everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from all around the planet. This first question is from Caroline from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Caroline says, what is the bite force of Tyrannosaurus and who is the ultimate prehistoric predator? Well, first, the bite force question, Caroline. One of the difficulties is that when you don't have a living subject who, where you can actually test the bite force, you have to estimate. Now, um, there's a number of different people that have used different methods to be able to estimate just how hard Tyrannosaurus can bite. And I've seen estimates that range from 6,000 pounds per square inch all the way up to possibly 10,000. The problem, with, again, with estimating bite force, even if you have a living subject to study, you can't necessarily determine whether or not that animal is biting as hard as it can. It's simply biting as hard as it wants to. So with a human being, you can tell them, I want you to bite as hard as you can, and we can get an accurate reading. The problem with sharks and crocodiles and, crocodiles and alligators is that you don't really know if they're capable of biting even harder. So when we make estimates of bite force, it's based on a number of different things. Unfortunately, it's not always accurate with living animals. Therefore, it can't be very accurate, in my opinion, with prehistoric animals. Even though the paleontologists that have done so many different kinds of research, I'm sure that they're coming up with realistic and legitimate numbers. But in my opinion, I, I just think there's a possibility that they may have a stronger bite force than even we can predict. Okay, Michael from Anton Chico, New Mexico. Hi, DG. Hope you're doing well. I am, Michael. And it's nice to hear from you. I think, I don't think I've ever heard from anybody from Anton Chico, New Mexico before. Uh, I was wondering if you heard of the new dromaeosaur uh, baldar, which has two killing claws on its hind legs, unlike the single claws of previous dromaeosaurus. If you have heard of it, what is your opinion? Thanks in advance. Wishing you well. Thank you, Michael. It's very kind of you. Yeah, you know, I just got information about that thing. What a cool looking dinosaur this is. He's a dromaeosaur, but he's got, he's got the strangest foot configuration I've ever seen. If I would have seen a picture of this thing, my first reaction would have been that somebody added an extra feature to a dromaeosaur in an effort to make it more interesting. But uh, I believe it was um, uh, Dr. S um, who was it? I don't remember who discovered it. Hans Dieter Seuss, and, and he's about as realistic as anybody out there. So uh, if he found it and he reviewed it, then I would say we're looking at a legitimate uh, specimen. And it's incredibly exciting. I think it's just absolutely neat. Okay, Tom from Armagh, Armagh Ireland. Armagh, that's a cool name. Ireland. Tom, how are you, buddy? He says, hey, DG, you're awesome. Thank you, pal. Uh, how's it going? It's going well, my friend. Anyway, here's my question. Do you think that small pterosaurs would rest on the back of larger animals as depicted in Jurassic Fight Club? Uh, good question, Tom. Since I wrote Jurassic Fight Club, I have to tell you that I have a, uh, a rather biased opinion of that. <laughs> but the reason why I wrote that and the reason why we showed that is because that's a very common thing for modern animals. You look at rhinoceros and they have uh, birds that sit on their back that do the same thing that I think pterosaurs would have done with larger dinosaurs. And that is they would have kept them free of parasites. They would have made great lookouts if you had poor eyesight. Uh, they probably had good eyesight and therefore they would have given you advance warning of anything coming in. But it makes sense because there's a lot of symbiotic relationships with animals today. And I strongly believe that prehistoric animals would have had those same sort of relationships. And for some of you younger guys out there, symbiotic relationship means two animals that live together and each benefit from the other. The pterosaurs would have been protected from ground predators because they would have been up high on top of this big hulking animal. And the big hulking animal would have had uh, a free cleaning service and on top of that, possibly a free lookout service. All right, Jin Young from Seoul, South Korea. Hello, Mr. Dinosaur, how are you? I'm fine, Mr. Jin Young, how are you, my friend? He says, I'm your number one fan in Korea. Well, that's, that's very nice of you, my friend. I'm very glad to hear that. He says, I have a question. Which do you think is more closely related to birds, truodontids or dromaeosaurs? In many dinosaur books that I have, it's written that dromaeosaurs are the most bird-like dinosaurs. But looking at their tail design, I realize that the oldest known bird, Archaeopteryx, 
had a tail more like a truodon, truodontid than a dromaeosaur. It doesn't have the elongated and hardened tendons, so I think truodons are more related to birds than dromaeosaurs. What do you think? Well, uh, Jin Young, truodontids and dromaeosaurs have a lot of very similar features, so they in themselves are pretty closely related. Um, it, when you get down to it, everything I've ever studied, to me it appears that dromaeosaurids are actually more closely related to birds, even if you've seen a feature uh, perhaps one feature on a truodontid that is more bird-like. In totality, in looking at all of the things, in my opinion, the dromaeosaurs were. But I'll tell you, you'd be hard-pressed to tell a tremendous amount of difference between truodont, uh, truodontids and dromaeosaurids, so they in themselves are pretty closely related. But I would say that if you had to flip a coin and announce which one, in my opinion, I think it's dromaeosaurids. But I really like the way you've looked closely at the, uh, at the evidence and you're doing your best to make a decision. Never think that if somebody disagrees with your opinion, that makes your opinion wrong. Don't ever think that. Um, it could very well mean that your opinion is probably one that's shared by a large number of people in paleontology. So um, I may not agree with you on this, but I will tell you one thing, my friend. Anytime I see somebody looking that closely at the evidence and making those kind of arguments, whether you are correct or incorrect is irrelevant to me. It's the fact that you are looking at it from a scientific perspective that makes your questions incredibly cool. And I'm glad you wrote to me. And I'm glad you're my number one fan. And if I ever come to South Korea, I'll look for you. All right, finally, Nathaniel from Woburn, Massachusetts. Hi, George. I've seen you on Jurassic Fight Club. Well, that's cool. I hope you like the show. Do you think T-Rex and other big predators were pack hunters? And do you think T-Rex could stand a chance? Hey, wait a minute. You know what I just realized, you guys? You know what I just realized? I just realized that all the way back at the very beginning, when Caroline asked me about the bite force of the Tyrannosaurus, she also asked me about who I thought would be the ultimate pre uh, prehistoric predator. In my opinion, I think the ultimate prehistoric predator would have either been Utah Raptor or Dromaeus or D Deinonychus. And the reason why I say that is because their brains were a little more advanced, their body design made them remarkably deadly, and the fact that I think they lived and hunted in packs made them incredibly dangerous. I'm sorry that it's taken me that long to answer that part of your question, Caroline. Now let's get back to Nathaniel from Woburn. See what happens when you get old people? Your brain just kind of works periodically. So uh, right in the middle of this, I'll be sitting and I'll say, ooh, I gotta get groceries this afternoon. Anywho, back to Nathaniel from Woburn, Massachusetts. <laughs> Do you think T-Rex and other big predators were pack hunters? And do you think T-Rex could stand a chance against Giganotosaurus? P.S. I want to be a paleontologist. Nathaniel, very happy to hear that you want to be a paleontologist. I'm excited that so many of you out there want to follow um, the science of paleontology because it's exciting. Uh, do I think they're pack hunters? Yeah, the evidence clearly suggests that big dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex and Albertosaurus uh, and some of those big guys, uh, Allosaurus, probably hunted in packs. And in my opinion, hunting and living in packs would have given them an advantage and allowed them to catch prey more often. Hunting by yourself means you're only successful once in a while. Finally, do I think it would stand a chance in a fight with Giganotosaurus? Yeah, personally, I think that it was uh, even more robust and advanced, more advanced. Uh, had a bigger brain and certainly better eyesight. I think all of those things would have made Tyrannosaurus Rex more than a match for something even as big as Giganotosaurus. All right, you guys, if you have a question, go to the website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. While you're there, sign up to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. To all of my Facebook fans, I always love hearing from you. Even though I don't get a chance to respond, I promise you, I always read what you write. And the same goes on uh, YouTube. You guys write so many nice comments and so many interesting comments. I just don't have the time to respond, but I promise you I read them all. All right, everybody, take care. Take care of the, yourself and the people around you. And for you young people, always practice your reading, and I will see you all soon.